Welcome to another episode of Burn Peak Express. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little different, but kind of the same. This morning, I glued up this four by six enclosure, which is going to enclose our micro crawler course. I just had surgery on my foot last Friday. It's gonna be a little bit before I can get back on the mountain bike. And so this is gonna be a great winter activity. Now, before we get started building this new micro crawler course, let's go outside for a second. So right here is our outdoor micro crawler course. And I built it one night in September out of pile of rocks. Every time I come out here, I change something, just pick up a rock and move it someplace different. And that's one of the great things about building with things in your natural environment is that it can be changed easily. But on an indoor course, we want to be able to pick up the whole course and move it because I'm not always going to want it in the middle of the garage. I'm not always going to want it in the basement. And so we need to really take into account weight. I've seen a lot of indoor courses where people fill it up with dirt, put rocks. That's great, but we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to be building with garbage. So I have beside me some supplies like spray paint and fake 3D printed rocks and little desert plants and things that we're going to use to create this crawler course. I also have Amazon boxes, foam from flat pack furniture, and this stuff is great because not only is it lightweight, but it probably end up in a landfill anyway, so we can build something with it instead. And so with that, let's get started building Trash Mesa Off-Road Park, the campground. So first things first, we're gonna use these cardboard boxes to create the structure, and I'm just gonna hot glue them down to the table and just roughly frame out what our course is going to be. So with these boxes laid down, this doesn't look much like terrain, but we're gonna lay these plaster strips over it. So these sheets are plaster. You can just dip it in water and lay it over the top of these boxes. And as they lay down and fold over, they're gonna look a little bit more like terrain. They're gonna look like mountains. I don't, I don't, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to pretend I have a plan here. And all you have to do is wait for them to dry and they should be hard enough for us to drive a crawler over. This thing dried way faster than I thought it would. See, it doesn't have the greatest traction. We gotta add like sand and stuff like that to it. Next, we put this sort of glue solution onto it and then throw this particulate at it. Yeah, so we'll see how well that sticks. Yeah, I think we really have to goop this stuff on real good. I'm a little skeptical, I feel like using spray adhesive or something would, would be better. But this is what the guy at the hobby place told us to do. All right, it's time to lay down some paint and start getting some color on this terrain. I cannot stress enough how this is not a tutorial. So the way I see it, the stuff that's facing up should be kind of dirt and the stuff on the side should be kind of rock because in real life, that's this is not gonna look anything like real life. Ooh, this is pretty light. We might have to go over this with like a sandstone kind of color because I misjudged the color of this flaky rock stuff. Yeah, this doesn't look like terrain at all. I think there's too much contrast. The lights are too light and the darks are too dark. So we went back to the store and got some different colored paints and mixing it up a little definitely makes it look more realistic. Now it's definitely not show quality or anything, but we've been putting sort of the mossy stuff straight down. And then on the sides where grass normally wouldn't grow, we're, we're mixing in grays and browns and stuff. And it's starting to look like terrain. And once we start putting rocks and things in, this is gonna look like a nice little crawler course for sure. Now, the way we're gonna delineate the trail, the place where you're really supposed to drive, the course is, we're gonna put the plants where you're not really supposed to drive. So the most difficult sections are not gonna have plants. So next up, we're gonna build a suspension bridge. Sweet. All right, I literally can't contain myself. This area over here seems pretty dry, I guess. So I'm gonna just climb up it just, just a little bit right here and see how it affects the crawler course, see what type of damage it does. And then we can always fix it. Okay, so we did a little test drive on the crawler course and granted it's not totally dry yet, but we took on some damage, a little more than we would have wanted to. So Kevin suggested we take an automotive grade clear coat and put like two coats on it, really, really soak it in so that everything gets held together. 
And so we're gonna do that and see how it works out. So it's Monday and Kevin's clear coat idea actually worked. We put a matte clear coat on here. It just seems way more durable. The sand isn't moving around a ton. Everything's really hard. I think we can ride vehicles on this. So that's what we're gonna try right now. We're gonna test out the crawler course for the first time. The anticipation is killing me. I think the most challenging part is gonna be the bridge. So the first vehicle that I'm gonna try and do this with is my Kyosho Rubicon because it sucks at climbing. It's super scale, it's got these little wheels with no tread on them. See, does it have the approach angle to get to this? Yes, it does. Oh yeah, look at it, beg for traction. All right, I'm gonna to have to give it some juice. There she goes. All right, I think I'm gonna to have to use this rock to get up this ledge. I put this ledge here purposely because it's a very harrowing looking feature, isn't it? Oh yeah. There we go. Wow. All right, we got to back up a little bit to make this turn. I'm going to try and go over this rock. Ooh, not quite lined up. Oh. <laughs> Yes! Wow! So, a lot of scrapage on the chassis and on the pumpkins, and that's good. It means it's a challenging course, and we have plenty of space to build additional terrain. And so with that, let's give it a try with a few more of these cars. Oh. Oh, really challenging. Oh. Oh. So what we have done differently. Well, first of all, we would let each step dry before moving on to the next one. If we let the plaster dry in the first place, we would have been able to dust off all the powdery stuff and then the paint would stick much better. Second of all, after the plaster dries, we would definitely put down a base coat of, let's say, brown. Do a few coats of that. That way, when a car scrapes it away, it scrapes away down to the brown and it looks like dirt. So. Letting each step dry sufficiently before moving on to the next one, I think is the main mistake we made here. But I'd say for a first shot, we didn't do too bad. Now, something that we will definitely do the same again is use these colors. I think these colors worked out great. Another great thing was the clear coat that Kevin recommended. And it made a huge difference in terms of how cohesive all this was and how well it held together. I'm also glad that we left about half of this table open because now that we learned all that, we can do even better the next time. So let me know what you want to see in our next crawler course. I think this is a great idea for anybody. It's only four feet by six feet. That's smaller than a pool table, that's smaller than table tennis, and in many cases, it's actually cheaper even if you include the crawlers. So really cool thing, you get to build it yourself. So let me know what you want to see in the next iteration of Jank Mesa, and thanks for riding me today. I'll see you next time. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think we can do this with the deadbolt. I changed the gearing in it, and yeah, it's just, it's hard to modulate at low speed. Let's, I'll try going up that. Ooh, that actually did, we actually took on some damage over here. <laughs> wow, okay. 
Oh! <laughs>